king to be to be how old, my darling? You will never be hurt by, and no one shall deny you anything. The people will bend to your whim and will behave as they ought to. There will be no bad people? No, dearest one. There will be no bad people in our kingdom. I'll make sure of that. That's called a dictatorship. Perspective. It's only chapter 7? Opening my eyes and moving my body is a struggle. I feel sluggish and numb and there is a suffocating heat on my chest that makes me difficult to breathe. When I finally do rise, my thoughts are tangled and confused. Where am I? She lives! I turn my head just in time to see Varg rise from the chair just to the side of my bed. Has he been sitting there watching me sleep? Like a creep? And... He's not wearing his mask. What are you doing here? You've been out for a week, princess. A week? I think I would know how long you've been playing Sleeping Beauty. After all, I've been here the whole damn... Varg quickly clears his throat before gazing down at me, an exasperated expression on his face. Do you remember what happened? Memories suddenly flood through my mind. They are fragments, but together they create a startling picture. Is there Mithros in the room? Twelve chimes of the clock, my 18th birthday, the TV, and... Mother! I set up immediately only to succumb to a wave of nausea and dizziness. Much to my surprise, Varg reaches out to steady me, his grip firm but gentle. Slow down, princess. You're not ready to fight me yet. What time is it? Almost on. Will you become friends again in the... In a few hours? Or have I lost Fritz forever? Would you believe me if I told you Fritz doesn't want to see you? The awareness of my last conversation with Fritz hits me with full force. After what happened the last time we spoke, I'm not surprised that Fritz does not want to see me. I was too ashamed to face you. I had no idea Fritz would react to the react the way he did to your words. I have most of the stronger memories, not all of them, but most. I thought he'd have m most mine too, but I guess that's not the case. What memories do you have? That's none of your business. The expression on his face is clouded. For a few moments, he is silent and thoughtful. In the beginning, they were mostly of you. What? Varg glances away. I notice the way his fingers drum e uneasily on his cane and stare. I've never seen Varg look like this. I, I carefully slide my way over to the edge of my bed. Allow my feet to dangle to the floor. Fritz cared f cares for you, princess. Take my word for it, if no one else. Why is he suddenly telling me all of this? Will I ever see him again? Or has he lost to you? Varg flinches back from me, taking a few steps back to put some distance between the two of us. I can't say. I watch Varg closely. I'd never noticed before, but Varg's emotions are very clear if you know what, you, what to look for. You cannot say, or you won't say. Princess, the gentleness with which he says my title makes me think of Fritz. However, just as I am beginning to hear Fritz's voice through him, his demeanor changes once again. The vulnerable man disappears and is replaced by the usual facade. Varg straightens and glares at me. He displays this confidence to hide his true emotions. It's like he wears two masks. You're more like Fritz than you would care to admit. Fritz would never hurt me. Varg snarls, but, he's no longer in but he no longer intimidates me. Fritz that, Fritz this, Fritz that, Fritz this. All you ever talk about is that idiot. Even though I've been the one by your side this entire time. Fritz is nothing compared to me. Then why do you feel threatened by him? My words render Varg speechless. I dimly notice the patterns of red dawn scattered across my room. The sun is almost up. I look back to Fritz. Uh, I look back to Varg. My eyes seeing Fritz. Varg moves. His eyes fierce as he closes the distance between us. Achoo! Hmm? 
Vard presses his lips to mine, effectively stifling the rest of the word. I have only a moment to gasp out for breath before Vard kisses me again more deeply. I raise my hand to sh push him away for a brief second as my mind hazes over in shock. Vard takes advantage of my confusion and moves forward again, an unreadable expression in his eyes as he leans over me. I try to pull away, but Varg tangles my hand in my hair, tilting my head back to press his lips firmly against mine once more. No, this is not right! I tremble as his free arm sweeps back my sweeps down my back and eventually comes to rest at my waist. Why is he kissing me? He doesn't even like me! Anger clears my mind. I ball my hands into fists and shove at Varg's chest. His eyes are bright and out of focus when I am able to look into them. His chest betrays his labored breathing. I wipe the back of my hand against my mouth as I glare at Varg. I do not trust myself to speak without screaming at him. Coherence slowly starts to filter back into his gaze. I can see the awareness in his gaze, along with the guilt. I suddenly realize that my cheeks are now wet with tears. Why am I crying? Varg taps his takes a step toward me, and though he does not utter a single word, I can see from his body language that he means to apologize. He reaches a hand out as if to touch my face. No! I move back and close my eyes. Adjuva! Lucette? Lucette? I open my eyes when I hear the familiar voice and watch as Fritz quickly rushes to my side and kneels in front of me. His hands cut my face as his thumbs brush against my cheeks, wiping my way to tears that I cannot stop. What did he do, princess? Fritz? I feel suddenly overwhelmed, like there is too much whirling in my mind. I'm not sure how long we sit there together, it feels short, like a single moment, but it could, not, could have been an entire eternity. I'm sorry, princess. Oh, my voice is going away now. <clears throat> I need a drink. I shake my head in an attempt to clear my fractured thoughts. Fritz frowns, but the expression clears as he brushes my hair away from my face. His fingertips gently trace my cheek as he speaks. I failed you as your knight. I should have never left you alone that night. I could have stopped all of this from happening. All have I done is cause you pain. And this past week has been hell. I didn't know if you'd wake up or I'd... Or if I'd be able to be with you when you did. He looks at me as expression grim. And I wasn't there when you did. Far it was. You... You finally know about him? Fritz nods as he gives me a pained smile. No apology could be enough to excuse what I did to you. I doubted you that night because I thought you were saying... I thought what you were saying was impossible. I wonder how I could be cursed without knowing about it. But now... I hate myself for treating you the way I did. I must have put you through so much suffering because I did not believe you. I know you have... I know I have never been worthy of you, but I now know I have betrayed the trust you had in me. He drops his hands and pulls away from me. I don't think I have the right to be called your knight. He reach, I reach out and grab his hand without thinking. Don't, don't say that! Fritz looks at me in shock. His wide-eyed gaze only makes me feel embarrassed, and I have to focus to keep from floundering. After a long moment, Fritz manages to smile at me. It is small but genuine. I don't like, uh I don't like deserve your kindness. Kindness? Is that what this is? We sit together in silence for some time, enjoying each other's calming presence. My room is quiet as the sun steadily starts to rise. Do you know what has happened during the last week? I'm afraid not. I wasn't myself for most of it. He is fading even faster now, and just when I feel what I've, that I've truly started to know him. I've already told you about the disappearance of the prince and princess, but it seems like the queen has gone missing as well. Ophelia is missing? 
I can only hope that they made it out alive and that Rod led them back to the Martian. There they will be safe. I didn't think I would ever trust anyone there, but I still don't. But the face of the Martian is a place evil cannot overtake. And whether or not Fard is truly evil, his mission is to kill them. I can at least be sure the Parfait will protect them. King Janora is still here, but he's different. He's not himself. And... What happened? It's your mother. The day you fainted, that same morning your mother returned. I can only stare at Fritz in shock, knowing that what happened that night wasn't just a dream. Everyone in the castle is acting as if nothing is wrong. It's like the last four years haven't happened. The, but the instant I saw her, I recognized her. After that, I, well, I don't remember what came next. My next conscious moment was day, when I saw you. Fritz raises his hand as if to touch my face, but he abruptly pulls it away. He flinches then doubles over, his face contorting in pain. No, not now. I won't let you. His eyes are cloudy, his gaze turned inward. He's speaking to the other side of him, which I cannot see. I reach out to him and try to call him back. Fritz! He looks up at me and attempts a smile, a sad smile. He's trying to make it seem like he's fine. When he speaks, it is through gritted teeth. Hal never let him hurt you. Can you trust me? About that, at least. Yes. Who said? The, shadow, the shadows dance around him almost tauntingly at first. Then they simply engulf him and Fritz disappears into darkness. I take a step back. I hate to interrupt. You again. I snarl at him, but Varg merely shrugs. He looks indifferent, as if what transpired between us n before never happened. I have things to do today. Varg turns away and walks briskly out of my room without glancing back. I make my way through the hallways of the palace, determined to find Sir Mithros. Over the past few months, I have been all but invisible to the people in the palace. It allowed me to pass undisturbed. I'd always figured it was because no one remembered who I was with my curse. But today, things are different. A maid sweeping the hallways jumps at the sight of me before quickly curtsying. Your Highness! Her eyes are downcast and she does not look up at me as I pass by her. As I walk past her, two other servants heading in my direction also move to the side of the hallway. Your Highness? Your Highness! I remember who I am now? But how? Has my curse somehow been broken? I spend the entire morning searching for Sir Mithros, but he does but he's nowhere to be found. The only room I have yet to search is the throne room. I mean she turned 18, that means her curse is automatically broken, right? It's too bad I won't show us her pendant, cause that's the only way. I push open the doors and walk inside. There I am met with an unexpected sight. The king sits on his throne, his posture regal but his eyes downcast. Your majesty? He does not look up when I enter, but I can see that his eyes are stony, unmoving. I approach his ca- I approach- I approach him cautiously, and upon looking closer, I notice how his eyes look empty. It's almost as if he can't see me. I inhale and something touches my throat. My heart begins to beat rapidly. What have they done to you? My princess. I whirl around and see Sir Mithros approach approaching me with a smile. Where did he come from? I could have sworn there was no one else here when I entered. Sir Mithros? I was just on my way to see you. Varg just, just told me you'd awakened. What is wrong with the king? Physically, there is nothing wrong with him at all. Anger begins to burn within me. You swore you wouldn't harm him. Is he not alive, my princess? Take a good look at him. The king is completely unharmed. The change in Sir Mithros' expression is subtle, but I can feel the malice in his gaze. 
I should add that it was difficult to keep this promise, princess. My queen will be having words with you about this. Mother? Where is she? She has left the palace for the time being. You have been unconscious for a week. My queen could not spend every moment fretting by your bedside. But didn't Varg said say that he was the only one to stay by my side? I shake the thought from my mind. When will I be seeing her? At dinner, I assume. Now if that's all... Wait! Sir Mithros pauses abruptly to look at me. The servants I met in the hallway seem to remember me. How? You really cannot guess. He sighs as he runs a hand through his hair. When you turned 18 and became the TV bearer, the curse that the lesser witch cast on you broke. What? Moments before your mother awoke, you were the strongest witch in all of NGL. The lesser, a lesser witch, a lesser witch's spell could not have any effect over you. Congratulations, princess. You are no longer a victim of the curse. Your life is back to the way it was before. Now, is there anything else you would like to ask me? Yes, there is. About Fritz. Much to my astonishment, Sir Mithros begins to laugh. The sound is cruel and so sharp and deadly it cuts through whatever hope had been forming in my heart. Oh, princess, do you really think it's just as simple as commanding me to do so? A caster cannot just take back their curse. The Lord told me something like that before I entered the Martian. Poor, upstanding, chivalrous Fritz. In many ways, he was much, he was too much of a knight for his father's liking. Sir Mithros leans closer to me so close I can see his crazed gleam in his eyes. Would you like to know how, why I cursed him, princess? I remain rooted in place but not flinching away from Mithros is harder than I would have thought. Sir Alcaster approached his son for help, accepting him, expecting him to help kill the king and take over the throne. But Fritz refused. Sir Alcaster needed an obedient servant, and Fritz deserved to be punished for stepping out of line. No. And so I removed those memories of Alcaster telling Fritz of his devious plans and gave him the curse. Fritz has been the Little Red Riding Hood curse. There is, after all, no better servant than the Big Bad Wolf. He has all the power and drive of the predator, but is still so obedient. Wolves are closely related to dogs after all. And better yet, the big bad wolf will always stay close to the lady he desires to devour. I can feel disgust seething in my stomach. I have created the perfect servant for Sir Alcaster. In short, Sir Mithros suddenly reaches out a hand to grab my face by the chin. He forces my head up at a painful angle. There is no breaking his curse, princess. Not unless Fritz is somehow able to mentally overpower Varg. And we all know how formidable Varg is. Sir Mithros releases me. Well, he told us how to break it now. Now put the idea out of your pretty little head. Don't you already know how- Don't you already have everything you have ever wanted? The smile wryly becomes- he smiles wryly before turning and walking out of the throne room, leaving me alone and trembling. To break his curse, Fritz has to overthrow Varg? In his own mind? A sudden cold descends upon me. I wrap my arms around myself and shudder. I turn to look at the king, but he has not moved since my encounter with Sir Mithros. Your majesty, did I do this to you? Mother... If she were here, she could make sense of it for me. Mother, where are you? I stare at my now trembling hands. This is not what I wanted at all. Princess, we cannot. I am the crown princess. Which is why we cannot allow you to leave on your own, your, your highness. It is strange to think a few months ago these same men did everything they could to keep me out of the palace. Your Highness, you'd need an escort if you want to leave. I can take care of myself. Back to being a nuisance, I see. 
Sir. They know who he is? I watched in su stunned silence as both knights salute to Varg. Varg turns to smirk at me. Well, what's going on here? The princess wishes to leave the palace to visit the town. Does she know? I can feel Varg's eyes on me, but I refuse to look at him. Fine, I will accompany her. But the queen said... The words die in the man's throat as Varg turns to glower at him. His eyes flash with impatience and it is enough to coax the soldier into silence. Open the gates. Y yes sir. The gates swing open. I rush out thinking that I maybe if I move fast enough I can lose Varg. So what are we here for? Though I tried my hardest to shake him, Varg is still irritable. Irri Hatingly close. It is impossible to leave him. Princess. Varg leans out and wraps his fingers around my elbow, pulling me to a stop in the shadows of the alleyway. My irritation is my irritation is immediate and I look up to glare at him. What are we doing in town? As much as I don't want to agree with those idiot knights, you really shouldn't be wandering the night the streets. My next my next words are cold and sharp. Why not? Before that, before that was what everyone insisted I do, and now the only thing everyone wants me is for me to stay indoors. Varg is silent for a few moments before finally letting out a exasperated sigh. <sighs> NGL is not what it was, Princess. What are you talking about? Varg places his hands on my shoulders and turns me so that I'm looking out into the streets. This is. I'm not overly familiar with the kingdom, but I, even I can tell something is off. The shops that had once had colorful display windows are now empty. Their displays are dull or non-existent. The liveliness of the market stalls is all but gone. My gaze is drawn to the bakery shop that Fritz had taken me all those months ago. Its dim windows tell me that it is closed. Must be a Sunday. There's so many places- Oh. There are so many different sweets here. Buy whatever you like. Are you certain? Absolutely. I know nothing makes you happier than a good pastry. How do you know that? Well, it's a chops. This is my job to know these sorts of things. Just how much do you know about me? Nothing that anyone else wouldn't know. What's my favorite color? Blue. My favorite flower? Lilies. I told you that these croissants were famous, right? Those are my favorite. I'll get a croissant then. Not a custard danish? I thought you liked those best. Uh... Uh, croissants. Of course. Right away. An all too familiar ache beats within my chest. Has it been that long since that day? Everything was so vibrant and full of energy back then. This place was so lively, but there was music that filled the streets and performances everywhere. But now... So much has changed. It's so silent. It's almost as if my mom came here and wrecked havoc everywhere and scared the piss shit out of everyone. The streets are so empty in the eyes of the people. The eyes are glazed and unseeing, like just like the king's. Oh, she just made zombies out of everyone. Well then, I step forward to get a get better look without realizing. I am only dimly aware of Varg's hands, which have not been, which have not moved from my so shoulders. What happened? The queen happened. But the people? She can take control and can demand obedience, but she can't force love or loyalty. The people of Angel are being crushed, princess. And they know who's responsible for it. Varg's voice is hushed, but she still draws stares. I flinch back at the expressions on the people's faces as they look at us. There's fear in their eyes. I instinctively retreat until I fall back into Varg. His hands tighten on my, over my shoulders. They know what you're. They know that you're her daughter. These are the looks they have always given me. This is why they have feared me. Abruptly. Varg draws his keep around me, enclosing me in darkness. 
When light finally filters back into my consciousness, I am facing a completely different street. What did you do? Smoke and mirrors. Things might have gone out of hand back there, so I got us out. He suddenly releases me and nudges me forward. Can we return to the palace now? I grip my teeth. I still want to see the town. It is impossible to think that the entire place is so changed. How is that possible? Sir Nitro said mother was out. I really need to see her. It's almost dinner time, princess. Your family will be expecting you. Mother will be expecting me. I should see her at dinner, right? Thinking about everything that had transpired exhausts me. I rub my eyes and sigh. Fine, let us return. Okay, we're gonna end it here. My throat is slowly becoming as raspy as the Laura. Like, normally raspy. So, yeah. Where are we? Chapter 7? So, I think chapter 10 is the end? I'm not actually sure. Anyways, I hope you have a good one. And I'll see you later. Um, yeah. I, I like blanked out for a minute. I'm like, what should I eat next? I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> uh, Alright. Hopefully we can turn this around. Even though this is like a much worse sort of situation than Walt's route. Hopefully everyone's still alive is what I'm hoping. Alright, bye-bye.